Good evening everybody. Well this is an impromptu go live. I know we normally do them on a Friday but um, I'm not actually going to be here this Friday so I thought I would record a, a little tutorial for a project that I'm working on that I need to get finished today. So to make up for me not being around on Friday you get me today instead. So what I thought I would do is um, I'm actually working on a uh, wall hanging for a show on Sunday with the Craft Cotton Company fabric and I think I showed you on Friday the metallics. Well, I'm having a play and this is my wall hanging as it looks at the moment. So I don't know if you can see. It is stripes of the grey metallic for the backing, for the background. Just hold that in a little bit closer so you can see. So that's quite uh, muted colours there. And then I've got these pops of turquoise and gold metallic circles. So as I love working with circles, I thought I would uh, show you how to actually make some because it's quite easy um, and circles can be tricky if you don't know the tips so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to show you how to uh, make the circles and how to applique them onto here so let me just lay that flat again what we need is either some waste fabric or some uh, stabiliser or interfacing. What I've got here is the uh, hemline sew-in interface. You don't want iron-on, okay? You just want sew-in. That's what I've got here. And this is the medium weight one. So it's usually used for cuffs, collars, etc. But I'm using it to make my circle. So this is what it looks like. It's quite thin. We don't want anything too heavy and it just makes life a little bit easier. So that's what you need. First of all, you need your interface. Then you need your fabric, which I'm going to be using this one for this bit with it. Just got a, a punch of the gold. OK, and then I'm using to cut my circles, the circle cut. OK. So this is uh, the Circle Cut Ruler by Simplicity, but you could actually use a plate or anything like that. Loads of different things to draw around, you know, a reel of sellotape and then a mug and then a tea plate and then a dinner plate. Because I think it works really well with um, choices of circles. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing I need to do is create my circle shape. Now, the way I do it is I'm actually going to draw my design. So let's just bring this down a little bit so you can see my table. And I'm actually going to fold my interface in half. Now, if you've got a um, 18 millimeter rotary cutter, you can actually cut round these, but I haven't got one handy. But what I have got is a marker pen. So my next circle, I'm going to do quite a small one. So I'm going to do a four inch circle. And on my, my fold is along the solid line on my ruler. This is the um, seam allowance if I was doing semicircles and needed to add a seam allowance onto it. So if you can see at the bottom there, you've got a solid line and then you've got a dotted line. So the dotted line is the seam allowance. But in this case, I want to be on the solid line because... Um, I need this to open up as a circle and not an oval. So I'm going to pick my four inch circle mark. Actually, no, I'm going to do five inch and just draw in that gap. And you can see there I've got a semicircle, which I'm just going to cut roughly around and then cut accurately my semicircle. So this is actually including a seam allowance but it doesn't matter what sizes you use you know this could be based on your dinner plate well obviously not this this could be based on a saucer all the way up to a dinner plate it's really up to you. So let me just fold these pieces and put them out of the way. Next I'm going to get my piece of fabric 
Now, actually, I'm going to use the one with a really dense gold colouring on it. Uh, let's pick a section. Mm, it doesn't quite fit in there. So look up here. You can see I've used some of it already. There we go. That fits in there. And I want a fairly even bit of gold. So what I'm going to do here... And you'll notice that I am putting the interface to the right side of my fabric. This is important. All right, cut that roughly. And now we're going to go to my sewing machine. So let's just move you forward. OK, so what I've got on my machine at the moment is I have a quarter of an inch foot and a straight stitch. Um, you can um, use your standard foot and just move your needle to the left and right until you get a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way round my circle. Taking the pins out as I go. I only worry about cutting one of the circles really neatly. Um, you could actually not cut either of them, but I find it easier to see. With this blue fabric, I don't see my blue pen very well. So actually cutting it out accurately gives me a better line to follow. Go all the way around. Till we get to the end and then over stitch a little bit because I don't want it to come off. Right now I'm going to trim to that quarter of an inch. All the way around. I can see there's quite a lot of you watching, so good evening everybody. Thank you for joining me in this impromptu session on my Facebook page. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to snip out all the way round, but not cutting through the um, threads. Okay, now I always put take a wedge out of the first one so I can see how far... I've actually got around my circle because I get impatient and if you just cut little lines it's very hard to see so if you do accidentally cut through your thread don't worry just go back to the machine and stitch over it again no harm no foul right so we're just snipping into this because if we don't when we turn this through we'll get lots of stray edges it's uh, against the edge of our circle because we need this to have a little bit of give in it like that and to do that you need to have cut out and snipped your curves so we snip um, anywhere that you use curves and you want to turn them out whether it's part of a toy whether it's an outfit or in this case appliqued circles you do need to snip out those curves and I take a little moment to do it well because if you do it sort of every inch or so, you'll find that you'll get straight sections in your circle. So doing it every, between quarter and half an inch. Right, so there we go. That's all snipped round. Now what I need to do is pull these two apart because I want to cut just through this interface. I don't want to cut through any of the rest. So we're just going to cut a circle. And now I leave a generous bit of fabric here. If you cut too close to the edge, the next step doesn't work very well. But make sure you don't cut through your front piece of fabric because that means you've got to start again. Right, so I'm cutting a rough circle. All right. So, and actually, if you work from the biggest circles inwards, you'll find that you can use the center to make the next size down. It means that you don't use a huge amount. Um, so I work from the bigger sizes down to the smaller. And then what we do is turn through. 
So what that bit of interface actually does is pull your seam underneath, as you can see there. And you see we've got a perfectly needle turned circle ready to stitch in place. I'm just in a second, I've just switched my iron on there because I didn't remember to do that. I just want to go around the outside and make sure I haven't got any straight sections and I'm going to very quickly just give it a quick spritz of heat just to iron it flat. But you see we've got a lovely, lovely circle there. So wait two shakes. And here we go, back with that beautiful circle. So, let's move it back out again. Hello again. Right, so what, we, what do we do with this then? Well, this is ready to be stitched down. Now, with the particular wall hanging that I'm doing, I wanted to get a sort of poofy look to my applique. So if I just show you here. What I've done is I created the the back the uh, background and then I layered that up. So I layered up the background before I put the circles on. So when you look at the back, you'll actually see the applique lines of those circles on the back there too. Okay, now I just like the way that this looks. And also I like um, the fact that I'm appliqueing and quilting at the same time, you know, doing it all in one step. So the next thing I need to do is change to my walking foot because obviously I'm working with quite a lot of layers here. Now remember again, I haven't got a left-handed sewing machine. Um, I'm using the front facing camera on Facebook, which means everything is backwards. So I'm not doing anything weird. It just looks that way. So loosen off the screw with the um, the ankle attached to my foot. Okay. And I put that carefully in my little pot so I don't lose it. And then this is our walking foot. Now the walking foot will go up and down like this as your machine, as your needle goes up and down basically. And those feet on the bottom, these feed dogs will meet up with the feed dogs on the bottom of your machine, keep everything running smoothly. So this little hand here is going to be cupped around the screw that holds the needle on. So I'm just gonna pop this in place. So just loosen off the screw and tighten this up because I am, even though I'm appliqueing, I'm technically quilting at the same time. So to get through all of those layers, and keep everything nice and smooth I want to keep this on here now I've got the thread I'm using is a polyester and this is actually um, an isocord uh, 40 weight 40 count so it's not hugely thick um, but I actually picked this up last year I think at the festival of quilts because I love the color a beautiful turquoise color and then popped it on my machine. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've actually got one of these circles already in situ and I have pinned it temporarily in place. So if we just smooth this out a little bit, I'm just gonna pop it under here just so that I can put it on my, on my mat so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the location of my next circle. OK, and actually when I started this big circle here, I actually started and finished in a section that I know is going to be hidden under that circle. So let's just add a few more pins in here, which I will remove as I go round. But make sure when you're doing your circles that you actually pin them flat. Um, because if you're sort of scrunched up a bit, it's easy to pin it with a kink in it like this. So make sure that little section at least is nice and smooth. You could also use a little bit of 505 spray, the Odif spray, quilting spray if you wanted to, to um, just secure this while you're uh, stitching around it. So that one's going to go here. And 
then the one that I just made, which I'm hoping is a bit smaller, will go probably, I don't know, I need to decide. Maybe there or maybe there. Actually, I quite like it there. So if I'm going to keep this here, I'm going to start my stitching just underneath here. So I'm just going to pop my pin pointing outwards just to remind me where we're starting and stopping. So now to get it under the machine. Now this is my FS130 QC, which doesn't have the most enormous throat in the world, but I have no problem getting something this size through it. We just need to um, work our way round and stop at the points where we want to um, adjust it. So I've got quite a lot of the quilt on my lap now, and I'm just gonna line up with that first Part a uh, circle. All right. So what I want to do first of all is drop my needle down, and then pull it back up again, and pull the bobbin thread out of the top and tuck it out of the way. What this means is that um, I haven't got a bobbin thread to catch underneath and it all tangle up everywhere. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches forwards, and then I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to take the pins out as I go round. And I'm going to slowly applique down. Now I only need this section to be smooth, the bit that I'm actually working on. So when we start to get, I need to turn it, just lift up the presser foot, move a little bit away at the side. Now, hang on, I've just my threads popped out the side there we go I don't think that's made any difference to the tension but right hold on one second threads a little bit tangled when I took it off I should have re-threaded with it but let's just see there we go we're all right now so no we're not right so what I'm going to do is just take this out because this does happen I'm just looking at it and just going to go through and re-thread so as when I took the th when I took the thread off just to show you I don't think everything went back as it should do and the machine when it's got a problem it just tends to stop which I think is a good plan rather than it just juddering on horribly so let's go back on Needle down, needle up, pull the thread, tuck it out of the way. Now I'm stitching over that last couple of stitches that went awry, just so that it's not going to come undone. And nobody's going to look at this in such detail that they, oh well actually probably will now on my show on Sunday. They will zoom straight in in that section. But I think I'm still in the bit where it's going to be covered by that circle anyway. So let's just move around and when I need to I just pop the lumps of quilt through and out of the way. So I'm stitching around the very edge of my circle and when I need to I stop and rotate it, take my pins out as I'm going. Now, I'm not actually seeing any comments on today, so maybe you're there, maybe you're not. I don't know, but I think there's quite a few of you, so nice of you to join me. This wasn't planned, but as I said, I'm not going to be here for my usual Friday one. So just to um, make up for it, and the fact that I'm doing this sample making tonight for my show on Sunday... Thought I might share with you what we're actually doing. Right. So I'm good halfway round now. Oh. Keep tucking it through. Ooh. 
So the walking foot will keep it nice and smooth. And actually, because I did those back stitches, I can actually trim these loose threads off and put them away. I find this a nice way to work with curves, whether it's, it could be the circles, it could be semicircles, quarter circles, hearts, sort of the melon shapes that you get with your leaves that kind of thing nearly all the way around and then back to the beginning and again I could even shorten my stitch a little bit to go backwards because that means it's really not going to come undone. Grab my scissors. And there we go. There's our appliqued circle. So you can see I've done a couple of circles here. And actually I use that ruler as well to mark another circle for quilting. Because I really like the look of circles, but what I'll probably do as well, in fact I'll show you, let's do it now, is I'm going to use the edge of these circles as a quilt line. So I need to just work out how far away uh, this is going to run from. So it's just looking at that, if I move my needle to... Actually, no, I'll leave the needle there. It is three quarters of an inch. So if I start three quarters of an inch in from here and give myself a little mark, which I can't find, there we go, a little tiny mark here, which is three quarters of an inch in from there and three quarters of an inch in from there. I'm just giving myself a little tiny pink dot. That means when I come all the way around to the outside, I should meet up in the same place. So that's my start point. Hold the thread again, needle down, needle up, pull bobbin up, bobbin thread up and out, so it's out of the way. Right, with this one I'm not going to back stitch because it's quilting on pale, I don't want an extra line of stitches. So what I'm doing with this is keeping these long and I will actually pull these through onto the back or stitch them through onto the back so that I don't um, get something too visible on top. So there's my dot. And now what I'm using is the edge of my foot. So if we just come in a little bit closer, hopefully you can see. I can't bring you in too close because, oh, when I move the quilt, I may end up knocking you over. But I'm using the edge of the foot here against the edge of my circle to give me a nice shape to follow. So, I shortened my length, didn't I? So let's go back and keep it smooth and keep rotating the fabric as we go. So I tend when I'm doing these not to go too quickly because I find if I do, I end up with a bit like that and then like that and then like that instead of a smooth curve. So just take it nice and slow and rotate as we go. I want to stop about three quarters of an inch from here because I want to rotate and continue. So you sort of eyeball it and I got that just right with the curve round here. But if I didn't, I could easily just sort of
So if you are watching me live, I'm not seeing any comments. I think I may have trouble with my connection. But what I will do is I will be saving this to my YouTube channel once I've um, finished this. It will be on my Facebook page, obviously. But once it's on the YouTube channel, you can refer to it back sort of more easily um, without having to go all the way through. So I do apologise if you're asking questions because I can't see them. That may be something to do with my connection. You can see that I'm tucking quite a lot of quilt through here. Let's put that through the edge there. Rotate again. So if you don't quite make it, you've not quite got it, you can actually just lift up your needle and your foot and just move slightly to the left if you need to get a little bit closer. So I'm going to come around the big one. But you see, this is a, an easy way to quilt round circles because we've got something to follow without actually having to mark. So, and I think it's quite effective. And actually, what I've done when I've done quilts like this before with circles is I've actually done, you know, maybe two or three lines echoing each other and then perhaps overlapping and. We shall see how many I get done tonight because I haven't had my tea yet. You know, got back from the studios and straight up here. So. So it's better to make small movements with a slow stitch then stitch more and have to make jerky corrections we're nearly all the way around just got this last little bit of the the big circle to do this other line of quilting here because I think it's quite good fun I have also marked a semicircle here you might be able to see just a little bit of it in chalk because I'm intending to at some point just put a little bit of uh, quilted detail in the corner Um, circles are the trickiest shapes to quilt but I think the trick is to make small incremental movements rather than great big ones so I'm back to the beginning now I'm going to cut that thread quite long and the bobbin thread okay and now what I can do is I come on to the back now this is my bobbin thread okay let's see if we can get you in a little bit closer maybe so this is my bobbin thread oh sorry just knocked you over this is my bobbin thread and as I pull it you can just see a tiny little bit of thread here this is the top thread that I've now pulled through onto the back and what we could actually do 
is if we wanted to be particularly lazy, we've got these two threads. We could tie them off with a double knot like this. Maybe do a triple, quadruple knot and cut that off. What I'll do with the other two that are still on the front is actually I will thread my needle if I can find a needle find a needle where are my needles I, I had one a minute ago I've got lots of pins here oh, moved it the joy of not oh I know what I need I've come back from the studio to see uh, which means everything is in my little sewing bag and in there I have a little sewing needle so where are those two threads take those two threads and cut them to the same length this is why I want to be quite generous with them thread my needle with both at the same time or not let's get both of them threaded at the same time one's white and one's blue so One's easier to see than the other. Okay, so now what I've got is I've got my threads both threaded and on the top. And I'm going to go through onto the back. And now to stitch them in, an easy way to stitch them in is to tie a little knot sort of about between quarter and half an inch from the fabric. Go into the fabric and into the wadding, but not through to the front. But go further than your knot is and then give it a pull. And the knot will disappear. Let me show you that again. Your knot will disappear inside the fabric. So I've tied a knot about there. Okay. Stitch through the fabric into the wadding, but not through onto the front. Okay. And I've gone further than my knot. And you see, there's the knot there. It's sitting on the top just here oh I don't know how it's blue on a blue background with a blue thread but there it is there and if I pull it she says if she pulls it you hear it snap inside now that is buried inside the wadding so do two of those and then pull the wadding back slightly cut the threads and it will nip back inside and basically disappear so for competition quilts where you need to bury your knots uh, bury your ends that's a way of doing it but here we go so what we've just done there if I move you back again hello is we have quilted round our appliqued circles giving it a bit of a tram line using the walking foot and that's the one that I've actually stitched. So moving back a little bit. I think it looks almost like planets and things. I like, quite like that look. So what I'm going to do the rest is this evening is I am going to take the other circle that I stitched. So just to recap, piece of interface, put them right sides together, sew all the way round. Um, cut through, snip out the seams, there you go, snip out those seams, chop a hole in the interface and turn it through. So now the interface is on the back and your fabric is on the front because when you put them right sides together obviously they were like that. So um, leave a generous bit here because I've done it before where I just left quarter of an inch and it kept unfurling. Um, but that's our circle. So then I need to decide where I'm going to place this circle. I think it was going to be here, but I might move it down a bit. I'll put this on my design wall and have a look and decide where I'm going to place that circle. Um, and then I will continue to quilt it with my walking foot, with that turquoise. I'm not going to do a great deal of quilting because this isn't a massive, massive quilt um, or wall hanging. 
but um, it's quite good fun to do. And as I've got meter pieces of this fabric, it's nice to have really long sections. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and uh, it's just a really fun thing to do. So whenever you work with circles, create your circles that way, you will end up with perfect needle turned edges and a nice easy way to applique them down. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you soon on um, another one of my Facebook Go Lives. See you later. Bye.